Right, as asked for year 13, here is a detailed example of questions on pulleys to build up your skills. I'm going to go this carefully. You've got two particles A, this is A, and it's mass 2 kilograms, and B of a mass of 3 kilograms. Nice, we've got a diagram uh, covered by a light, inextensible string. It's Price is a smooth pulley, so no friction at the pulley. At fixed at the top of a rough inclined plane. Okay, so that means there's going to be friction on the plane. A lies at rest on the plane and B hangs freely from the edge of the plane with the string taut. So that means it's essentially fully stretched. Particle A is released from rest and accelerates up the plane at 2 meters per second. So that helps us indicate where friction is. So if this is going up the plane, friction is going to be acting against it. Okay, so friction is here. Now we're going to have. Uh, 3G because of weight here, and you're going to have 2G here. Now, remember, tension normally at the start, if that is taught, the tension is going to act this way, and that's how we start the question. Now Always on these types of questions, resolve parallel to the plane and perpendicular. So that's 40 here because we know there's a right angle here, 90. So that's 50, that must be 40. Okay, remember this is the adjacent to the angle, so that must be cos. So that must be 2g cos 40. And this is 2g sine 40. And that's step one. Now it's asking us to find the tension in the string. So we start off with F equals MA. So at, at B, you can see we're just resolving up or down, right? So we have 3G minus T. We've got the acceleration here, A equals 2. Equals, because that's a total force, this is your F. And the mass is 3kg times 2. So the next step is we get 3g minus t equals 6. Now we know g equals 9.8. So if we make t the subject, we'll be plus t and then minus 6, we get t equals 3g minus 6. So the tension is. 23.4 newtons. Now, I want to show you something because you could work the tension going parallel to the plane, resolving parallel, whichever way, but then we will have to find out friction first. Now, we don't have the coefficient, so we or friction yet because that's in part B. So we can't resolve. <clears throat> so let's go on to part B now in a different colour. So that was the answer to A. Now part B. The coefficient of friction between A and the plane. So that's mu we need to find. So we resolve um, perpendicular to the plane. So 
for that. Let's get the normal reaction. So we know 2G cos 40 equals R, which means R equals 15 Newtons. Now why we need R is because friction equals mu R, right? This friction is going to equal mu R. So what do we have? So we're going to resolve now parallel to the plane. Let's start with F equals MA. Now you should be able to see we have the tension going this way, minus 2G sine 40 and minus mu R which is our friction. So we can write T minus 2G sine 40 minus mu R and that's our total forces. So don't get mixed up with the F's for friction equals the weight is 2 and we know the acceleration is 2. So that's our MA part and the other left hand side is our force. So we can work that out from before we get 23.4 because the tension is the same minus 2G sine 40 and we know R is 15 so minus 15R equals 4 and if we resolve and work that out we get minus 15, oh not R, that's mu because R is 15. We get minus 15 mu equals minus 6.801 and we get mu equals 0.45 to two significant figures. So hopefully that one wasn't too bad. Now for part C, okay remember in the earlier example The force exerted on the pulley by the string. So if the angle at the bottom of that triangle here was 40, this angle here must be 50. And if we split that into two, we get two triangles of 25. Not two triangles, but two angles of 25. So we combine the forces acting on the string, we get T cos 25 add T cos 25, which equals 42 Newtons to so two significant figures. Right, year 13, I'm going to go through this question in detail to increase your understanding because there's a lot to these questions and it's all built on prior skills. So we've got a fixed rough plane inclined at 30 degrees, that's the incline at 30 degrees to the horizontal. A smooth pulley here, so that's no friction at the pulley, no friction here. P is fixed at the top of the plane. Now we've got the two particles A and B, 2 kg and 4 kg respectively. So let's just do this, 4G. Now imagine if this pulling is pulling down, then the tension's got to act the other way. You've got 2G here. I like to do the force triangle straight away. That's 60. So that's 2G cos 60 and let's see we have to read the rest of the question to find out which way 
that is going but let's read the rest of this so we've done this yeah inextensible string which just passes over the pulley uh, the part of the string from A to P is parallel to the line of the greater slope of the plane and B hangs freely below P we've got the coefficient of friction between A and the plane um, now this is the clue initially A is held at rest on the plane the particles are released from rest with the string torqued and A moves up the plane so that lets us know friction acts against so friction is going to act that way or you could do it like this as well it depends what you want to do just so as you know so I'll leave one there so not confuse you but that should make sense now the mark scheme is to the side to show you that you can definitely earn marks on these types of questions so this is going to move up the plane and this is going to move down hence the friction is going that way now tension at the start will act in the same way towards the pulley and it says find the tension in the string immediately after the particles are released so that's when it's just released So it probably uh, right anyway. So let's get up this line here, equation of motion. Well, that just means the F equals M A. So what are your forces? You've got now. You can try to resolve. Um, parallel to the plane but we don't know F yet so there's an unknown there but we can work it out um, from here that's the important clue so we have 4G minus T equals the mass times acceleration you do have mu in the question I'm just going to write that mu equals one over root three because we're going to use that eventually now that is only the coefficient of friction so it's not actually the frictional force here so they're two different things right so as you can see just writing that gets you two marks I think we can all do that now we resolve parallel to the plane so initially with the weight is like so that will be 2g sine 30 because that weight will act in this direction against the, sh the ball or the particle moving up this way should be say particle so that's why this arrow is here so resolving at a and we can just say uh, parallel to the plane we'll draw the arrow parallel make that clear now we're still using F equals MA here so I'm just going to change pen so let's what do we have we have here and here and T now we're resolving this way because that's the way the particle is going to move so we're going to get T minus the F minus the 2G sine 30 equals mass times acceleration which is 2 times A that's another two marks here on this question okay um, you could do this all section but let's just leave it like this because if we break it down into workable chunks it does make a lot more sense now what do I always tell you class if you don't know what to do is a parallel and perpendicular to the plane so resolve perpendicular 
I'll draw an icon to show that. So we get a normal reaction because there's friction. Adding that in. Now what do we get? R has to equal the 2G cos theta. So R equals 2G cos 30. And we're very good at that. And we'll look at that another little mark here. Now we're almost there. Now we need to find the friction, which is F here. So we want to use F equals mu R. So F has got to equal 1 over root 3 times our R that we found. Because R is going to be equal to this section here. 2G cross 60. So we're just going to do our value from U times our R we got here. Times 2G cross 30. We know G equals 9.8. And that actually equals G, which equals 9.8. So what do we get? Or we could just write it like so, or we could make T the subject, depends what you want to do. But we've got T minus F, which you know F is G, so F, so T minus G, because it says F, 9.8, um, minus 2g sine 30 and sine 30 I believe it is a, a half equals 28 so t minus 2g equals 2a just so you can understand the mark scheme so many of you can get here that's really good that's six marks now this is where we can become a little bit unstuck because we have t minus 2g equals 2a, and we know g is 9.8, but what's t and 2a? We have two unknowns. But didn't we work out somewhere at the start and find an equation to, in terms of t and 4a? So we can use um, substitution or simultaneous equations and substitute that in. And that is how we complete the question, and that's a skill that we use in all mechanics for challenging questions if you remember now let's start this we have 2a here and we have 4a here so um, from above it's right up here 2a so you can see must equal um, 2g minus a half t because we just divided everything by 2 so t minus 2g equals 2g minus a half t so 1.5 t equals 4g so 4 times 9.8 divided by 1.5 equals 26.1. So 1 point, um, so t equals 4 times 9.8 divided by 1.5, which is going to give you 26.1. Newtons to 3SF and then that's actually done so remember to look at your um, method because for all more challenging questions in mechanics you do have to substitute remember I've shown you that in the past do watch this video again and try it and see if you can get it right from stage one that will really help. I really hope this helps you guys.